Hi to everyone and welcome to this IEEE Spectrum Tech Insiders webinar entitled Latest Data Converter Development at Teledyne E2V, 12-bit, 8-GSPS DAC-enabling signal generation up to K-band. So right now, to get this webinar started, I'd like to pass things along to today's presenter, Romain Pilar. Romain is an Applications Engineer at Teledyne E2V. So Romain, welcome to today's event. And with that, I'm going to pass things along to you to get us started. So go right ahead. Hello everyone, let me welcome you to this session. My name is Romain Pilar, I'm an application engineer at Teledyne E2V in the Signal Processing Solutions Business Unit and based in France. Today's webinar is entitled Latest Data Converter Development at Teledyne E2V with a focus on our 12-bit 8 giga sample per second digital to analog converter enabling signal generation up to K-band. Teledyne E2V has been at the leading edge of innovation in the data conversion industry for more than 30 years now, uh, with the first gigasample per second ADCs and DAX on the market. Today we are evolving in a very competitive market that stimulates innovation to bring new capabilities to our customers. And I propose here to review what benefits our technologies could bring in RF and micro -RF systems. Today's agenda breaks into four parts. I will first bring to your attention what benefits Teletiny 2 vs data conversion technologies can bring in high capacity demanding systems. Then I will introduce you our latest D2A converter solution, review its key features and show you how signals can be generated directly in the K-band. Then I will show some measurement results up to K-band to illustrate the performance of the DAC and bring you evidence of the clear interest of our solution. I will finally end the session with key takeaways and our perspective of development. Every one of us is conscious about the massive amount of digital content we are accessing in a day-to-day -day basis through our connected smart devices and associated applications. In the years to come, there is still a forecasted increase of the global data traffic with, for example, 82% of the internet traffic made by video viewing. Whereas the majority of us does not care about how all this content is carried to our device, people care about their service provider to ensure the data are accessible everywhere and every time. So this, however, has a big impact on the capacity of the overall infrastructure on Earth and in space. And this is where Teledyne to be create innovative solutions with wideband and high-speed data converters with the ability to digitize on the receive side or synthesize on the transmit side directly the microwave spectrum. In this webinar, we focus on the transmit side and more precisely on the digital to analog converter. You will see how Teledyne E2V pushes the traditional limits of spectrum access directly from the digital world with very high frequency signal generation and wide frequency bandwidth. Having the capability to synthesize directly at very high frequencies allows the simplification of the RF signal chain and bring the data converter closer to the antenna. So this is a simplified schematic using traditional DAC that converts digital data in the analog domain in baseband or in the first Nyquist domain. So knowing the Nyquist theory of sampling, our microwave capable DACs allow a direct signal generation up to K-band. For illustrator here, between 18 and 21 gigahertz, directly at the output of the DAC. So on this simplified schematic, the LO generation block and the up conversion stage can be removed, reducing the bill of material, as well as the global power budget and optimizing the RF interface. Having a very high sampling rate, our latest DACs allow to access a very wide instantaneous bandwidth, leading to increased capacity. Uh, the capacity of a channel is uh, formulated uh, through this equation coming from the Shannon Hartley theory. The increased capacity is of particular interest in satellite telecommunication in very high throughput satellite payloads uh, with an illustration here with the ACS-14 uh, satellite from Airbus DS. 
Uh, this also allows frequency reuse and agility. We, you have here basic concept of uh, two bands included in one very wide bandwidth that our DAG could provide. Here is an illustration of uh, color reuse scheme in satellite communications. They are also interested in carrier or band aggregation in cellular telecommunications with this example in the microwave vehicle with possible band aggregation between traditional bands here in green and the E band. So the E band is around 70 gigahertz and 80 gigahertz. About our latest DAC solution. So let me introduce our latest EV12 DS480 DAC, which has a resolution of 12 bit and a high sampling rate up to 8 giga sample per second. The DAC is based on the Infineon's B7 HF200 CG bipolar technology. It is composed of a selectable 4 to 1 or 2 to 1 multiplexer for the input data, and its 12 bit resolution is built on a hybrid architecture with the most significant bits obtained from a current steering circuit and the least significant bits from a binary weighted structure. The DAC is based on a single core architecture and then doesn't rely on any internal interleaved core DACs or interpolation to achieve the 8 giga samples per second. It means that no calibration is required before or during operation of a temperature, as it is sometimes the case with interleaved multi-cores architectures. Also, the output spectrum is free from interleaving spurs, and the latency is kept uh, very short, uh, with here uh, only five clock cycles. The figure on the right is a simplified block diagram of the DAC, where you can see the digital input interface uh, with a processing unit. The data are sent from the single processing unit to the DAC through a standard low voltage uh, differential signaling or LVDS interface. Buses A, B, C and D they are composed of 12 bits each. The conversion is realized at uh, the external clock uh, frequency rate. The nominal sampling rate is 6.4 giga samples per second which can be increased up to 8 giga samples per second associated with a reduced input data rate allowed by an input underclocking mode setting uh, or IUCM which is which will be described in the next slides. The RF output interface is differential. There are four output uh, waveform modes available and also described in the next slide. So the EV12DS480 inherits from a previous generation DAC called EV12DS130 that was designed for space applications and which holds a proven track record in space. The DAC offers uh, four output waveform shaping modes uh, which allow optimizing the device performance in the different NACRI zones to address. So the NACRI zones are defined as the bandwidth of FS over 2, where FS is the sampling frequency. So the modes are um, non-return to 0 or NRZ, return to 0, RZ, narrow return to 0 and RTZ, and the RF mode or radio frequency. You will see in next slides some illustrations using the RF mode. Output pulse shaping features are also available. The RPW determines the duration of a return to zero to avoid distortions at uh, data value transition. The RPB determines the position of the return to zero window. It is then possible to get the best trade-off between output power level and dynamic range by selecting the right output mode uh, with the right RPW and RPB. For more details, uh, you can find uh, more information in the product datasheet, uh, which is available on our website. So there is a close relationship uh, between the input data, data rate, and the instantaneous output bandwidth. The maximum nominal instantaneous bandwidth is 3.2 GHz, corresponding to a sampling rate of 6.4 sample per second. 
but this bandwidth is limited by the FPGA LVDS interface performance. For nominal settings, so without activating the IUCM, the relationship between sampling frequency and the input data rate is linked to the multiplexer ratio selected. The clock frequency is divided by 2 in MUX221 or by 4 in MUX421. Um, for example, in MUX421 with a clock frequency of 6.4 uh, GHz, the input data rate is 1600 mega samples per second. And this is the common speed limit found in commercial FPGA's products today. So this figure shows the output power versus the output frequency uh, for the RF mode at uh, a sampling rate of 6.4 gigasamples per second. This is the nominal case with a maximized instantaneous bandwidth or Nyquist zone of 3.2 gigahertz. Each Nyquist zone is represented as well as the X, KU, and K bands. Reducing the input data rate and activating the IUCM settings make it possible to operate the DAC core at higher rates while repeating the data on the output. A carefully thought combination of sampling frequency, IUCM activation, and output mode allows to reach higher output power in the KU band, for instance. On this figure, you can see the output power versus the output frequency in RF mode at 8 uh, gigasamples per second. In this case, the instantaneous bandwidth is reduced to 2 GHz, so a Nyquist zone of 2 GHz instead of uh, 3.2 GHz in the previous case. You can clearly see that the output power is increased here in the KU band compared to the previous case. And switching to the IUCM4 mode would lead to a reduction of instantaneous bandwidth of 1 GHz due to the repetition of uh, the data on the output. Now you are familiar with the capabilities of the DAC and some basic theoretical behavior. Let's see some measurement results. First result is the output power. This figure shows the output power versus the output frequency for the RF mode at an F clock of 8 GHz in the different IUCM modes. So here on the plot you can see IUCM 1 or no IUCM mode. This is just, it is just plotted for reference since it has a strong degradation on the dynamic performance. But in red and blue, you have the output power uh, in IUCM2 and IUCM4 modes. So with the IUCM2 or 4, you can see the output power reaches the same level as the IUCM at output frequencies equal to multiples of F clock at 8 gigahertz, 16 gigahertz, and 24 gigahertz. This makes the Nyquist zones located from either sides uh, of these frequencies usable thanks to maximized power level and lower roll-off. So despite the minus 3 dB bandwidth of 7.5 GHz, the DAC, power, the DAC output power attenuation is moderate and it can still deliver minus 27 dBm at 26 GHz. The SFDR is the spurious free dynamic range which is extra extracted from the spectrum plot. The figure shows the measured SFDR versus the output frequency and you can see the different bands X, KU, K and KA bands at F clock of 6.4 gigahertz in the RF mode. So it shows, the measurement shows a continuous degradation with the increase of the frequency. However, in the KA band, uh, above 26.5 GHz, the SFDR is uh, above 30 dBc. So this figure shows a typical 
um, spectrum plot for an output frequency of 25.5 gigahertz. Um, this is realized in the same condition as previously shown, so at 6.4 gigasamples per second in the RF mode, without activating the IUC mode. Um, in this condition, uh, the SFDR can reach uh, 44 dBc, and an output uh, with an output power of minus 33 dBm. Despite the DAC capability to deliver good dynamic performance up to very high frequencies, uh, the corresponding output power is moderate and will require amplification for the DAC to be embedded in a complete RF signal synthesis system. And this is an experiment uh, we've made. So a filter and an amplifier have been inserted uh, at the DAC output just after the balloon to evaluate their influence on the performance. The amplifier has a frequency range from 18 to 26.5 GHz with a gain of 40 dB. The power consumption is 2 watts. This amplifier is an LNA from Fairview, the FMAM3260. Um, the bandpass filter has a frequency ranging from 22.4 to 25.6 GHz, corresponding to the 8th Nyquist zone at 6.4 GHz samples per second. The reference is from Mercury Microwave. The filter is mandatory prior to the amplifier to avoid amplifying the spurs of the adjacent Nyquist zones that otherwise would end up degrading the performance of the Nyquist zone of interest. This figure shows the spectrum of a single tone in K-band at 23 GHz obtained before amplification and after the amplification and filtering. It can be observed that, as expected, the power level is increased from minus 34 dBm to plus 7 dBm uh, without any degradation on the SFDR, which is even slightly improved from 34 dBc to 40 dBc. As a broadband characterization figure of merit, the noise power ratio is useful to extract the effective number of bits or ENOP to this equation. The figure here on the left uh, shows the NPR pattern uh, with 90% Nyquist occupancy replicated on over 12 Nyquist zones, so from DC to 12 GHz using a sampling rate of 8 giga samples per second and the IUCM4 mode. Uh, the pattern is plotted uh, using the RF mode. The figure on the right is uh, zoom on the 8th Nyquist zone, so from uh, uh, 7 to 8 gigahertz. So despite the higher bending of the output power, the band flatness observed on the 8th Nyquist zone is still very good, with around 5 dB difference between the middle and the edges uh, of the Nyquist zone. And um, from this measurement, uh, an enob of 7.7 .7 bit um, is, uh, has been ex extracted. Now, uh, what are the takeaways of this presentation and the perspectives of our future developments? Teledyne E2V provides innovative solutions to push the boundaries of data conversion right into the micro spectrum, paving the way to move the data conversion closer to the antenna. This presentation focused on the transmit side with the first DAC enabling direct signal generation from bits into the K-band. Teledyne E2V will keep on providing innovative solutions based on these first building blocks in order to achieve performance improvement, keeping in mind the ease of integration for our customers and their system simplification. These solutions must be easily implemented in future communication systems uh, with a trend towards multi-channel, MIMO active antenna systems with beam forming, beam steering and beam hopping capabilities. I would like to thank you for attending this webinar. If you have any questions or if you need more details, do not hesitate to contact me. You can also visit our website at www.teledyneE2V.com. The datasheet of the EV12DS480 featured in this webinar can be found in the useful link. 
Okay, Romain, thank you so much for that great presentation, and thanks for taking the time to be here with all of us today. Take care and have yourselves a great day.